let's get started. Probably the biggest story this week. Just before the G7 kicked off in Quebec, Canada, Canadian Minister of Innovation, Science and Economic Development Navdeep Baines met with the French government to announce an agreement for the formation of an expert group on artificial intelligence. This will include a vision of human-centric AI based on human rights, inclusion, diversity, innovation, and economic growth. There has been lots of concern in the AI community and beyond that governments need to do more to keep AI ethical. Another big story over this past week is all about Google and its affiliation with a Pentagon project. Project Maven is an initiative to improve the Pentagon's artificial intelligence capabilities. In March, Google's affiliation with the project was made public. More than 4,000 Google employees then signed a petition against this involvement and more than a dozen workers quit. On June 1st, Google told employees it would no longer renew its contract. There are many reasons for this, including the implications of AI warfare research and development. We're going to talk a little bit about AI warfare later on in the show, and I want to share a video with you in terms of the potential of what could happen in an age of AI warfare and why it's so incredibly important that we consider the ethics of going into this space. Another really interesting and perhaps disturbing story has taken place at MIT. A group of students decided to program a bot named Norman using gruesome images from Reddit. All of these images depicted death and violence. Based on this biased data, when Norman was asked to explain what it saw, you can only imagine based on these ink blot tests that the results of what Norman thought were always also filled with death and destruction. While some people may see a bird or two people in love using these ink blot uh, tests, of course Norman saw something much different. He saw a man who perhaps was shot dead and many other examples of how in fact information and data that is biased can have a negative effect on what's taking place right now with artificial intelligence. Uh, it's an interesting story and lots to watch in terms of what's coming out of MIT. On the positive front, uh, a recent example of how AI has been used to help to identify animals, a new research paper in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences described how advanced AI technology is helping to automate animal identification in the wild with almost 100% accuracy. As the senior author of the paper explains, this will dramatically improve our ability to both study and conserve wildlife and precious ecosystems. Thanks to cameras and AI software that is capturing and labeling millions of images at a rate well beyond human capability. You can just imagine out in the wild if we were to use hundreds of cameras and take millions of photos, how long it would actually take a human to analyze all of that data and go through all of those images. Of course, now it is capable of being done in just a fraction of the time using AI software. I was at a convention this week in New Orleans that was focused on higher education and I had an opportunity to meet someone from a company called VMOC and this is our tool to test. We're going to be testing out some AI tools in the future so if you have ideas please do let us know. What VMOC is is a smart career platform and what it allows you to do is to upload your resume. Once you upload your resume, you're able to get instant feedback and create essentially a benchmark as far as where you have done well with all of your information in terms of laying it out and it also scores your resume as far as maximum impact. As an example of an individual who has tried this out, Billy Nelson is a marketing major and said, I uploaded my resume to VMOC and within seconds the platform identified my errors and how to update my bullet points for maximum impact. I actually tried this out with my own resume, not that I'm looking for a job, but I had an opportunity to see what it had to say about my resume. And what it had said is that I wasn't using enough action-oriented terms. It only took a few se se uh, seconds to do this and it worked remarkably well. As I mentioned earlier on, we're gonna talk a lot on this show about AI ethics and uh, we will bring you different videos and research papers to take a look at. This one in particular has been out for a while it's from the campaign to stop killer robots and what this is is a video 
that is showcasing how two individuals from the back of a van are able to program these killer mini drones that can then be dispersed. They can also track and locate targets wherever those targets happen to be without any collateral damage or troops on the ground. These bots are programmed, as you can see here, to target specific individuals. This means they could be programmed to identify people based on age, sex, a uniform, ethnicity, and the list of categories goes on and on. At this point, it really begs the question as far as where we're going in terms of the future of AI warfare. And it really indicates how important it is for governments to come together and consider the implications of artificial intelligence and to really think seriously about the ethics of AI. So I was definitely happy to hear what took place this week in Canada with the Canadian government and the French government. Now, we also want to recommend different books that you should read from the bookshelf this week. We have a book called Human Plus Machine, Reimagining Work in the Age of AI. This book is from Paul Doherty and James Wilson. I had a chance to interview one of the authors recently, and I have to say it's one of the best reads that I have ever gone through as far as the implications of the future of work when we involve artificial intelligence. The nice thing about this book is that it was an overly optimistic view as far as what is going to take place and really talks a lot about how we can prepare for this inevitable future, a future which means that humans are going to have to learn how to partner with machines and the implications in terms of this partnership. Now, for our market watch, wanted to talk about a company that is based in Japan. This four-year-old AI company is Japan's most valuable startup. It's worth a couple of billion dollars. Preferred Networks applies cutting edge deep learning technology to improve how just about everything can be manufactured. Toyota is one of its backers and it has done some pretty impressive work in just a few years so far. Recently at CES they tested out some mini autonomous vehicles and had a chance to see how they would navigate obstacle courses. So that was pretty impressive as far as the capabilities there. It's definitely a business to watch in the future. Thank you so much for watching The Algorithm. We will be back shortly and let us know what you think of the show.